In a world where beauty and business collide, one man stood out. Brandon Truax, a visionary in skincare, changed how we think about beauty. But behind the success and the bright lights, a story of struggle and mystery was unfolding. Brandon was a genius to some a maverick who wasn't afraid to break the rules. His brand Decium rose fast and changed the game. People loved it and they loved him. But the higher you climb, the harder you can fall. As time went on, Brandon's behavior started to change. His words on social media worried some people. He shared a lot, maybe too much. Friends and fans started to wonder, was everything okay with Brandon? His posts were raw and real, but they were also cries for help. People were talking. What was happening to the man who had it all? His once clear vision seemed clouded and his actions became more puzzling as the days passed. Then one day in January, 2019, everything stopped. Brandon, who had been full of life and ideas was gone. How did it happen? Was it his choice or was there something darker at play? In this episode, we will be examining Brandon Truax's life. We will also talk about his bright start, his big dreams, and the journey that led to his sudden tragic end. Welcome to Profit Predators Business Scams Unveiled, where the glossy facade of entrepreneurship meets its shadowy counterpart. In this series, we dive deep into the world of white collar crime, unraveling the stories of ambition turned deception. From the boardrooms to the courtroom, we expose the mechanisms and minds behind the most notorious business scams. These are tales of greed, betrayal, and the pursuit of wealth at any cost. Stay with us as we reveal the true cost of these crimes, not just in dollars, but in trust and human impact. Your journey into the darker side of business starts now. Brandon Truax, named Ali Roshan at birth, was born on the 19th of June, 1978, in Tehran, Iran, before the widespread unrest that would erupt into revolution a few weeks later. In 1995, his family moved from Iran and became permanent residents in Toronto. When he was young, his mother passed away from breast cancer and his estranged father went back to Iran. Brandon continued his education and pursued computer science at the University of Waterloo in 2001. He excelled in his studies, earning remarkable grades. Despite not being a skincare enthusiast during university, he developed a passion for computer science and solving intricate problems. In his early career, he collaborated with laboratories in both Canada and New York City. His focus was on understanding how creams and cosmetic products were manufactured, identifying the costly and active ingredients, and distinguishing them from the filler ingredients. After graduating, Truaxi started a software development firm called Scamati Corporation and a nutritional supplement company named Organic Senses Leltide. However, both companies were dissolved in 2008 and 2007 due to not filing annual returns. In 2003, Truaxi started his initial skincare brand, Iwoko, with his partner Julio Torres. Pasquale Cusano, a Vancouver jeweler, acted as his mentor and investor. Truax stepped down from the company in 2011. Brandon met Pasquale Cusano in a random encounter at a hotel in Canada. Cusano approached Truax in the bar and said, I heard someone who was louder than me. I had to say hello. Kusano was a close friend of Estee Lauder's founder, and this connection would benefit Brandon in the future. A few years after teaming up with Kusano, he began selling a beauty elixir to drink, a skin cream infused with Viper Venom, and potions that promised to enhance your appearance in photographs. His bold claims started grabbing attention, and some of them were featured in both the New York Times and London publications. The UK's Daily Mail ran a headline questioning whether you should use hand cream on your face, pointing out that it's often three times cheaper and contains similar ingredients. Brandon developed a passion for skincare and a love for beauty. He started Decium in 2013 with a plan. Instead of introducing just one brand under the Decium umbrella, he launched 10. It sounded like a wild idea, but Brandon had the skills, talent, and passion to make it happen. The brand we all know now, The Ordinary, wasn't part of the initial launch of the 10 separate brands by DCM. It came later and became a significant part of their $2.2 billion company valuation. In February 2017, 11 months before Brandon's life took a dark turn, he explained why he chose to start 10 brands instead of just one with DCM. According to him, when you start, no single brand or concept can justify or afford significant investment in having an in-house laboratory, creative manufacturing technology, IT, distribution, 
sales, and marketing resources. However, when you work on a few brands, they can each afford the diversity and the timeshare of our resources. To tell the story truthfully is crucial to consider the other individuals behind DCM. One of those key figures is Nicola Kilner Reddington, the current CEO of DCM. Nicola began her career as a business management student in Nottingham, UK. She participated in a sponsored work program with the Chemist Boots, which eventually led her to become one of the company's youngest buyers. Boots is a large chain of beauty stores in the UK selling medicine, skincare, and beauty products. During her time at Boots, Nicola crossed paths with Brandon. He was an entrepreneur and she was a buyer. Nicola and Brandon's relationship began as friends, but it soon evolved into the essential components of their own beauty business. They decided to collaborate after Nicola shared her unique beauty business concept, distinct from Decium. Brandon, in turn, shared his idea for a technology business. The two merged their ideas, giving birth to Decium. This marked the start of his journey to create one of the world's most beloved and affordable beauty companies. Brandon had a deep affection for beauty, and beauty reciprocated that love. Most people also loved him during the early days of Decium. Within Decium, a staff member described it as resembling a cult, but a positive one. Everyone was united on the same path. They considered themselves a family, and if they were a family, then Brandon played the role of a surrogate dad. Everyone embraced Brandon's vision of creating a brand, or even 10 brands, that could influence and shape the beauty category. In April 2013, Decium introduced its first brand, Inhibitif. At the peak of Decium's success, they were selling a product every second, totaling over 31.5 million products annually. The demand became so substantial that they struggled to keep up with the supply. The company relocated its head office four times in four years. The strategy was to establish 10 brands that complemented each other. For example, if you had one brand and needed to meet with suppliers, why discuss just one brand during overseas travel when you could cover it for all 10? The same applies to marketing and back office functions like finance. DCM served as the main brand with 10 others operating beneath it. Another crucial factor in Decium's success and the guiding principle behind Brandon's creation of it was a commitment to innovation. It stemmed from a passion to shake up the beauty industry. Brandon aimed to challenge the major players in beauty. Decium started with the tagline, The Abnormal Beauty Company. Brandon was determined to alter the cost of products and ensure that the language used to promote skincare brands accurately reflected their effects, not what marketing wanted people to believe. This determination led to the creation of The Ordinary. The brand played a significant role in the success of Dacium. The packaging for The Ordinary was straightforward, white with black writing. There were no false claims on the front and it was affordable. Cheap, it was not low quality. According to various reviews, it offered top-end quality at a low price point. That was precisely what Brandon and Nicola aimed for when they established The Ordinary. In October 2016, they introduced 27 products, initially sold exclusively online. Later, the company expanded, opening 30 stores in Canada, the US, the UK, Mexico, South Korea, and the Netherlands. By 2017, there were more than 25,000 people on a wait list eager to get their hands on the product. Customers absolutely adored The Ordinary. It became a massive success worldwide, catching the attention of major brands. Big players like the Estee Lauder Company closely observed SEM, and in 2017, they invested $50 million to acquire a 28% share in the business. Brandon praised Estee Lauder for understanding their pricing strategy, future plans, and disruptive approach. The decision to collaborate with Estee Lauder was prompted by the company's struggle to keep up with consumer demand. Sales soared to approximately $300 million annually, with expectations to quadruple by 2019. It was the late months of 2017, and Decium was soaring high, especially with The Ordinary standing out as extraordinary. Decium wasn't meant to be just a beauty brand. Brandon, with his background in technology, actually wanted to create a technology concept centered around the number 10. There was also a food concept with various ideas floating around, all focused on the idea of doing 10 things simultaneously. Brandon wasn't just creating a brand or 10 brands, he was forming a family. He didn't subscribe to the marketing rule of focus. In one of the Decium offices in Melbourne, there was a sign on the wall that said, focus is overrated. Concentrating on one thing was not Brandon's strong suit. 
Some people saw him as a bit of a mad genius. He spoke quickly and occasionally mumbled, and his slight accent sometimes made it challenging to understand him. These traits were part of his endearing and charming personality. However, troubles were on the horizon. In the following 12 months, the company and the team behind it would face the possibility of being canceled. During the Christmas of 2017, Brandon and a small close-knit team at Dexium took a holiday trip to Amsterdam. Nicola Kilner, his co-founder, chose to vacation in Australia and New Zealand with her family. Nicola mentioned that Brandon was always seeking ways to boost his creativity and that by the end of 2017, he had developed an interest in magic mushrooms and the concept of exploring different parts of the brain. It was more of an inquisitive approach, almost like pondering how the mind functions. This interest was sparked during his time in Amsterdam where it was legal. Globally, over 180 species of mushrooms produce psilocybin. Truffles, possibly as a defense mechanism, can be used for recreational purposes or to explore deeper psychological, spiritual, or philosophical insights. In late 2017, it's believed that Brandon began experimenting with mind-altering hallucinogens, starting with magic mushrooms. This was out of character for him. According to Nicola, before 2018, he rarely drank alcohol. He was full of life, a ball of energy, and didn't need anything more to lift his spirits. However, in early 2018, there were reports that he took mushrooms in front of staff, believing in their creative and spiritual benefits. A few months after the Estee Lauder company invested in Decium, Brandon started to act differently. He believed there was financial wrongdoing, blaming Estee Lauder and his business partner, Pasquale Cusano. His conspiracy theory centered around an overseas loan he thought was handled suspiciously. Despite Estee Lauder's boss confirming no impropriety, Brandon persisted. He continued pressing Mr. Lauder even when the replies stopped. Brandon then gathered his 10 closest confidants at Decium, including Nicola, who hurried back to Toronto after cutting short her family holiday in Australia. This time, Brandon was acting differently. Around this time, things started to take a different direction. For those not part of the 10 close confidants within Decium, they sensed something was going on with Brandon. However, the rest of the world remained unaware. This changed on the 12th of January, 2018, with a post appearing on The Ordinary website. The post focused on a product made by The Ordinary and called out a competitor, Drunk Elephant. The description read, despite being called a luxury oil by some, it's a fantastic oil in every sense, and one would have to be drunk to overpay for Marula. Many saw this as a clear dig at Drunk Elephant, which priced their 30 ml bottle at $72, while The Ordinary sold the same size for $10. In an interview with the Financial Post, it was revealed that Truax used crystal meth in Britain, resulting in his arrest and subsequent treatment. Then, 12 days later, Brandon launched into a rant on Instagram, not on his personal account, but on Decium's main account. In a video, he declared the cancellation of all of Decium's marketing plans. He also wrote that henceforth, he would use the Decium account as his own, personally responding to all comments and emails. All the videos and posts that had been shared on the Decium Instagram account were later deleted. His behavior escalated further when he fired several employees publicly on Instagram and engaged in confrontations with customers online. The situation became increasingly chaotic, resulting in the departure of key team members like Nicola Kilner, co-founder, and the resignation of the CFO. Despite attempts by Estee Lauder, who had invested in Decium to intervene, Brandon continued his downward spiral until operations were eventually shut down indefinitely. In October 2018, ELC took legal action when Truax abruptly ordered the immediate closure of all Decium operations, citing financial crimes. He went on social media, expressing concerns about attacks on his reputation through false information and fears for his families and his own safety. As a result, Truax was removed as CEO and Nicola Kilner became the sole CEO. Shortly after, a restraining order was issued against Truaxi for sending emails to ELC Chair Emeritus Leonard Lauder and other executives. Andrew Ross and Pasquale Cusano were now the only board members. ELC's legal action also prompted the appointment of PricewaterhouseCoopers to investigate the alleged financial crimes and report to the board. 
A few months later, at the age of 40, Truax passed away. His death occurred early on the morning of the 20th of January, 2019, reportedly after falling from his Toronto apartment in the distillery district. A spokesperson for Estee Lauder Companies expressed, Brandon Truax was a true genius, and we are incredibly saddened by the news of his passing. As the visionary behind Decium, he positively impacted millions of people around the world with his creativity, brilliance, and innovation. In conclusion, Brandon Truex's journey from founding Decium to his turbulent downfall is a cautionary tale of the impact of mental health issues on entrepreneurship. Thank you for joining us on Profit Predators Business Scams Unveiled. Today's journey through the intricate webs of deceit and ambition reminds us of the price of unbridled greed. As we conclude, remember, awareness and integrity are our best defenses in a world where profit can often precede principle. For more insights and stories that peel back the layers of the business world's darker side, subscribe and stay tuned. Together, we'll continue to share stories that shock and shape our marketplaces. Until next time, stay informed and always question the integrity behind the profits.